The lateral line is proudly partnered with Vertex Lubricants. Just walking up the road to Milan's house to have dinner. I think I have dinner at Milan's house more than I have dinner at my own house. If you haven't figured it out yet, he's a pretty good cook. Once dinner has been had, then we'll be back to my house. I've semi-packed the boat. I've got all my gear into the boat at least, but Milan's got to get all his gear into the boat and then we're off on another fishing mission. Milan's luck trying to catch kingfish at the moment has been horrid. <laughs> He is in desperate need and want to catch a kingfish, so when you are desperately in need or want of catching a fish, then you do what you do best and you do what you know the best, and for Milan that is the Coromandel. So after dinner, after the boat is packed, we will be headed to the Coromandel. By the time we get there it's going to be pretty much close to dark, if not dark already. So the plan today is just to find an anchorage, get set up, get that big tent set up and then uh, spend the night and be ready for tomorrow morning. Where the forecast for the next couple of days is actually pretty good. Forecast for tomorrow is exceptionally good but it was a full moon last night. I don't know why we keep doing it to ourselves, fishing after the full moon but the weather always seems to be really settled after the full moon so it's pretty hard to stay at home when you've got a good weather forecast. So yeah, a couple of nights in the Coromandel. Here we come. Please the Coromandel gods give me land giant kingfish and giant snapper because I haven't had a lot of good fishing sessions lately. Well, I've had good sessions, I just can't catch any fish. <laughs> Anchored? Not yet. Not yet, but soon. Tent time, let's do it. I'm going to have to put my phone down and give Milan a hand to pitch the tent because this is a first for both of us <laughs> and trying to film it and put the tent up is probably going to be a bit much so I will see you in a flash. Check out my tent! <laughs> it's a pretty big tent. Now all i got to do is zip in my little bottom piece. The boat's ginormous. It's like a monster tent. <laughs> I like it. I like it too. <laughs> our boat man. Check me out. <laughs> and there you have it. A completed tent with a wall. And voila, I've got a door. And oh, a window. so good. <laughs> I don't know if you realise how massive can, this like, area is. Like, <laughs> it's a double e bed, like, on the front of your boat. Come and check out Camp NATO. Up the stairs to the penthouse suite. Sleeping bags all set up. I got enough room to have all my bags and stuff over here. I can like pretty much crouch and walk around in it and then just crash out to bed. <laughs> I've dreamt about this thing for so long and now that it's finally done and it's awesome, I just can't wipe the smile off my face. It suits you, Milan. It's definitely your colour. <laughs> <laughs> you can have your camo tent. <laughs> Well that's it, I'm ready for bed, Milan's ready for bed, we'll see you in the morning time. Red sky in the morning, shepherd's warning. It is 5.30 in the morning and it is pretty much daylight. It is just insane. It's high tide at 8 o'clock this morning, so in my mind we've got till 8 o'clock to be loaded with live baits, burly pumping, ready at a spot for a kingfish to swim past. Well that's that. Breakfast has been had. While I was deconstructing the awesome tent that Roger built for us, Milan was catching live bait. So we got, I think, three kahawais in the live bait tank. And we are off to find Spot X and hopefully Milan's first kingfish in the new boat.
just waiting for the tide and there's a mussel boat working, so we're just going to go see if there's any snapper in the chute. We might be able to get dinner nice and early. That makes Milan's burly trails look really average. Leaving the remote at home these days isn't such a bad thing because now we can drive the Minn Kota straight from the sounder. Do you reckon it's going to matter? Anything's going to get eaten, just going to put it in the water if they're there, right? Oh, soon going to find out. It's a Merry Christmas, Marlon. It is a Merry Christmas. <laughs> the muscle boys decide that it is. I might not be able to catch snapper here, but you probably could. And having a Mincota be able to sit in the lines when the muscle boats are working is so good. Mincotas are awesome. Oh, you finally oh, got I one! Got one <laughs> I finally got our dinner. The barge had to leave to get one. <laughs> That'll be the first snapper on the new boat. Is it? On this boat. <laughs> <laughs> it is too. There it is. First snapper on the new boat. Dinner fish. Breakfast. One more of those and I reckon we'll go let me land catch a kingfish. I'm gonna get a kingfish though, I reckon. I hope so man. I have I have faith. I've been losing a lot of fish lately and a lot of it I think is because I'm doing the little things wrong. I've repacked my tackle bag because I didn't have all the gear that I needed to do the job that I needed. So this morning, high tide, 8.30, we've caught a few live baits. Gonna head down to a little point that pumps a bit of current on the outgoing tide for like the first two hours, two and a half hours. Then if the wind stays down, I'm pretty sure we're gonna head down back into the Gulf. We've got a couple of little reef structures down there that fish really well for kings. I've always found the lee of the land when the wind's blowing is the best place to catch your kings. So find the lee of the land, a little bit of current and go for gold. Deploy anchor. We're in some pretty rugged country here. There's a bit of a rock structure that comes out. And if you're going to catch kingies in the Coromandel and you're going to swim big live baits, you've got a really good chance of having a 30 kilo fish coming along and trying to eat it. So make sure you get up for them. Got those big flash rod tubes and you're rigging your rods on the boat, man. Well, I was rushed getting out of the house yesterday, so. Rushing. We had to get on the water before dark so we could get the tent up. There you go, you big beast. Lively deployed. It's one of those days in the Coromandel when the only waves you've got to worry about are from passing boats. Kingfish already? Yep. We haven't even got a second live bait in the water. Whoa! Yep. Oh, dude! <laughs> oh, that looks solid! Oh, that's a shark. That'll be a shark, surely. Feels like a shark. Yeah. I'll run up and see if I can get a shot from up here but it hasn't busted off either. So let's not call it a shark till it is a shark. Yeah. Oh, this could be the first like big kingy. If that's a kingfish, it's big, man. Yeah. Kingfish that big would have done a mean run. I thought that wave had just popped my release clip. It is a kingfish, man. Is it is, it's a kingfish. Holy crap. <laughs> Go Mylan. It's a good fish. Oh, here we go. Now he's fighting. It's a big fish, man. Up the front, up the front. Quick, quick, quick. <laughs> no, don't let him in the weeds. Oh, it's a good fish, Milan. Oh, dude. It's a ripper. Oh, come on, Milan. <laughs> Keep him off that anchor. Oh, nice one! <laughs> Why is it so funny when your mate's getting railed? Well, what do you call it now? You're not getting railed, you're getting casting platformed. You're getting platformed. Pulling the boat around. It's pulling the boat everywhere. <laughs> I need to take my jumper off. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, this is awesome. <laughs> Milan got one. I knew he could do it. Come on, Milan. Oh, that's a reaper. <laughs> Beautiful long fish. Shaking. Fantastic. <laughs> First fish and it's a good one. Oh, nice fish, Milan. <laughs> Well, if you're going to catch one, you might as well catch a good one, I say. There's very much a system in the Coromandel. I know it pretty well. When we were struggling in the harbour, I said to Nathan, we've got to get up the Coromandel, give it a go. Gone. Oh, oh that's a ripper, as they say. <laughs> that's a reaper, mate. <laughs> as Nathan would say. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Go to the new boat! Live bait number two? Yep. <laughs> Might be stop and chill out for the afternoon if we keep on going out, <laughs> I'm all ready to stop and chill out, man. One big kingfish is more than, more than, more than, more than I possibly could ever want. Especially at this stage after we've lost how many. Especially with my fishing of late. Oh. Uh, it's just so around. nice. So nice to break the duck. That's been a bit of a bit of a bone of contention for me. You start thinking that you can't fish, but it made me get all my tackle together, it made me go through everything, it made me get prepared, and I reckon that's why I caught the fish. Been getting a few questions on YouTube about what rod you're using on that 20 Saltiga, so what is it? Just go into your store and ask for a Saltiga PE10. A Saltiga PE10, but does it have like numbers on it? C83FHSDF. Must have been a good fish, the jersey's coming off. It's a beautiful day. <laughs> it is a the beautiful day. The best day we've had on the boat. It doesn't look like we're going to have to go anywhere to catch a snapper. A heap of them just turned up in the burly trail. Dinner collecting time. Dinner fish. You got one? Yep. Set them down nice and deep. All courtesy of bait junkies even. Hey, hey. hey, don't lose it. Don't lose it. Don't lose it. Don't lose it. It was a bit small. <laughs> it was a bit yummy. Kingfish, oh, I see it. I see it, Milan. See if I can twitch him up with this one. Definitely a good one for this live here. Yeah, look big enough to eat that live bait though. Yeah. So he'll eat oh, a sluggo. Yeah. He ate it. Oh, no. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, no way. Oh, God, I love the coromandel. Oh, the bait fell off. Oh, no. Oh, no, it didn't. No, it didn't. Get your sluggo on him. <laughs> I should have the drone up for this. It's another good fish, isn't it? Oh, he got it then. No. We did, no, you got it. Oh, oh Milan's two for two in the Coromandel. <laughs> on the big long rod too, bro. On the, what's that, a nine footer? Yeah. Wanna see how good that BG reel is now. <laughs> oh, I miss this place, Milan. We got asked to trial out some new BG reels from Daiwa. I said, sure, we'll chuck them on the boat for two or three months and we'll thrash them and see how they are on the king <laughs> And when you're fishing weed lines, uh, it's awesome. Mm. Not everyone can justify spending a bucket load of money on a Saltiga. So it's nice to be able to say, guys, hey, we fished these reels and we thrashed them and they actually ended up being really, really good. Uh, here's a kingy. Woo! Uh, <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> That rod looks good, bend over. <laughs> One of the best things about the boat is I can, I love fishing long rods, mm. and I can actually fish nine foot rods now out of the boat, nine and ten footers. And you might say, why would you want to? But they're so much fun. And they're awesome for when you need to cast sluggos around them. They're so multi-purpose. When you're land base fishing, there's a Spartan. 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 Got him beat? Yeah. Come here, little dude. He ain't so little. Nah, they're beautiful fish. <sighs> nice fish, Milan. 
He's a beauty, nice hook zip. Nice just to be doing things right. <laughs> <laughs> you earned it, man. <laughs> you totally earned that one, and the one before it. Cool oh, putting a bend and a 10 foot rod on the new boat. That's a cool thing about the boat, it's just a platform, so it's actually like a land based ledge. That's the coolest thing about it. It's just a ledge that you can take anywhere you want. All right, let him work. What a fantastic morning. <laughs> Come on, Mr. Fish. He's good. He'll go, eh? Bull, 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 bull. We've only got one life bait left, but who's complaining? I'm complaining. You might not be, I am. I was like, is that the last live bait? And Milan's like, yep. And I was like, wicked. Doesn't even like the fishing, uh, just likes the filming. I like filming more than I like fishing, I think, at the moment. We'll go but get the fly rod out. I did bring my fly rod. And if Milan runs out of live baits, NATO's gonna rig his fly rod up real fast. Sluggo time now. If that was out there when that other last kingfish was there, it would have got owned. Milan's got time on his side today. Had a couple questions about the phone chargers on the dash. They are scan strut active phone chargers. And you can leave your case on and it charges perfectly. That's a big snap for you later, though. Let's get this one in first so we've got enough for dinner and lunch and stuff. <laughs> lunch is almost served. The time has come to move. We're down to one live bait. So first off, we're going to go hunting live baits and then we're going to stick to our plan and go into the Gulf. It will be weather dependent. Well, if we get down there and it's a bit rough, we'll be changing plan. But for now, we're going to the good spot. We just went to the good spot. <laughs> it was, eh? What an awesome morning. Check out that. That's a big rock to our left, a little bit to our right, so we're going to pump fairly straight over the side of it. Here we were thinking that the weather around here might not be so good, and it is perfect. We've got a ton of current, but we didn't manage to find any live baits on the way here. So the one that we have in the tank right now is extremely special. Where's that rock? I love that, eh? An 8.6 rod just appears out from under the dash. Rigged and ready. That's definitely a sluggo fish, that one. That's 20 kilos. No, I wouldn't have said 20. I would have said half that. No. Not I would have said 10. <laughs> yeah, if I was fishing, I would have said it was 30. <laughs> definitely big enough to eat that line. Here he comes. He's coming for it. Oh, he ate it. <laughs> <laughs> On the Number break. three kingfish of the day. <laughs> Nice work, Milan. That was awesome. Came up for the slug. I hope it looked as good on my phone as it did when I was standing here. Beautiful fish, man. They look cool coming up and eating the yeah, slug. Yeah, it's a real, um, real light coloured one, that one, eh? Yeah. Milan's got him beat. I think so. Come on. That hook wasn't coming out. Not in a million years. <laughs> Destroyed the slug over. No, you just, you just pull that one back through, it just pulls oh, out. Yeah. Oh, nice. That there, if you don't have one in your box, put a sluggo in your box. They are super deadly, especially in the Coromandel. Just slow twitch. I used to do real fast twitch, but I've started doing a slow twitch. Check it out, Milan's got another kingfish in his arms. <laughs> it's been a good day for cuddling kings. Milan's oh. three from three. Woo. Redemption <laughs> feels real good. Real, real good. Another nice king in the burley. Can I get my fly rod out? Yep. Well, take, that, take that thing out of the water before it gets eaten. I said to Milan the other day, can I have a rod tube in the boat? And he's like, nah, I've got like seven rods on in the boat. I'm not even allowed one rod tube. And he's got like five. That's not fair, eh? Fishing. You are, you're fly fishing too. Oh, 
Still cast a fly rod. Just switched out to the popper fly, wouldn't eat the piper one, so might as well try something else. Well, that was a bit of fun. I couldn't get him to eat my piper fly or my popper fly, but NATO just went fishing. <laughs> I haven't been fishing for, I don't even know how long. I think the last show we filmed for Big Angry Fish would be the last time I actually had a serious fish. So to be casting my fly rod at a kingfish, too good. I already had lunch. Lunch and, a, and lunch. Now he's talking my language. Lunch and a kingfish for NATO. We're heading into the bay. Milan's going to cook up some snapper. I am going to unleash my phone on some time lapses because I like time lapses. And we'll just chill out for the afternoon. This afternoon's plan is to pump a big burly trail into a mussel farm and extract a big snapper. Awesome little bay. It looks like lunch spot. We headed into the bay to have snapper for lunch. Got greeted on the beach by what I'm guessing is a bunch of wild goats. I jumped out of the boat with the drone to film a few shots, you know, the whole get up high and come screaming in down on the boat and then from the boat go screaming back up high again, you know, that whole arty farty thing. This place almost looks tropical from the air. And then Milan says, hey NATO, come and give us a lift before the boat gets stuck. <laughs> well guess what? It was too late for that. The boys were stranded for the next five hours, at least. Well, that's kind of what we thought it was gonna take five hours for the tide to go out and come back in. Which of course did not stop Milan from cooking the boys lunch. We had fresh salad from Milan's garden and fish that we caught just hours before. And I'll tell you what, it was good. Then while I was filming time lapses as I do when there's no fishing to film, Milan was catching crabs and taking photos. Today was the first time in like, well, at least two years since I've cast my fly rods. So I took the opportunity to get some casting practice in. And basically after that, we just hung out on the beach and watched the tide come in. And we are now fully recharged, ready to rock. What is gonna happen next? And did I mention that the wind is a lot more than it was when we came in? It was forecasted though, so we have a plan. Oh, that's looking like some got some success. Go, Milan! We're floating. <laughs> I actually want to be floating, I was getting a bit bored. I think the phone's going to go away. We're about to find out just how wet of a ride our open boat is. Hopefully it'll be awesome. Well, if you're gonna drive around in Coromandel with 15 knots of wind and a meter of slop in our boat, you are gonna get wet. <laughs> Unless you're driving straight into it or straight away from it. But that's to be expected with an open boat. We are right now sitting on spot lock with the Minn Kota in a mussel farm. Milan is churning the water with Burley right now. We've got a heap of pillies. And the plan is to catch some snapper to take home for the boys to eat. If we stay, we're going to wake up tomorrow to 20 knots of west northwest, and that is not good. First bite? Yeah. Cool. It was never the intention, but this little cubby hole here made the mean rubbish bin. Dane from Marco Boats, thank you so much for your drone. The drone has just again found an insane pack of fish. Milan's seen a splash over there and he's like, oh, what's that splash? While I was already in the air with the drone. I go charging over there and there is an incredible amount of mullet in amongst the mussel farms. It's like in places it's like three rows deep of just mullet on the surface pouring from one muscle row to the other and then just on the outside the last line of the muscle rows there's kingies three of them at least and they are actively hunting those mullet rods have been rigged at a billion miles an hour the burleys come in we just got to shoot round to the other side of this muscle farm and then i reckon we're going to minkota casting distance off that last 
row of muscle boys so that when the lure lands, we are locked up and ready to go. If the fish hits it, Milan can't give it nothing, can't give it anything or it's going to be straight into the row. He's just going to have to muscle it out. I've just been watching those kingies swim up and down this edge of the mussel farm and like three rows deep is just mullet all in this corner of the mussel farm so all we've got to do know, you wouldn't even know they're here all you got to do is get a cast in front of one of those fish man and i reckon it's on i so wish i had another battery for the drone even though we know those fish are there it's still a bit of blind casting going on Well, that's our day, that's our trip. That forecast has totally changed. Another night on the water would have been awesome, but the coolest thing is we can get off, so we're gonna get off, go home, repack, and we go again. That was awesome. Big kings in the mussel farm on mullet. Doesn't get any better than that. I was so sure we were gonna get one of those fish. They were just constantly cruising that outside edge, but 50 casts later and didn't even get a follow, so yeah, home time. But what an awesome trip! Milan caught a big kingfish! The lateral line is proudly partnered with Vertex Lubricants.